Welcome to a full tour, exterior, interior and the technology of the new VW ID4. This new all-electric SUV, approximately the size of a VW Tiguan, a little bit smaller, a sibling to the recently reviewed also Škoda Enyaq. We'll give you all the details you need to know now in Full HD, full screen and full length. Let's go! In the front we can see a very round shape, some kind of VW Beetle heritage. We already seen that with the VW ID3, but here then in this more higher crossover look. In the lower part, this you know grill structure, and this is also a real opening then for some cooling. Some cooling is still needed, not too much of course, therefore here everything is closed. Then a nice light signature that goes all the way from left to right. Headlamps start with LED as standard, option you can get the matrix LED, they call it IQ light here, that's their lighting brand. And the logo here with the new retro look, but in the US for example, it would also be allowed to have it then in an illuminated way. Pretty cool, not allowed here in Germany. But overall I think a very friendly and likable look here in the front. Short hood you will see that because of this building platform using more space when it's an electric vehicle, so the exterior-interior length relation is better then. And that's how the turning indicator looks like in the higher LED trim version. The length is at 4 meters 58, 15 foot or 180 inches. And now you can still take your guesses from which side I will enter the stage. Ta-da! Today it's from the front. <laughs> Wheels come from 18 to 21 inch. This is here the highest trim level. First, it says for this first edition, the first launch models, and this is the so-called first max, so the highest trim then. So these are the 21 inch wheels also, so the biggest ones available. You see here crossover cladding, but very well integrated with the rest of the paint. The paint is honey yellow, but we'll also have a blue car. You've maybe already seen it in the intro soon more to that as well. Here the side profile, once again as I told you, this rather van shape style with the short hood in the front. Then we have a contrasting silver in the top part here and also forming this C-pillar. Strong shoulders and also a pretty, you know, strong dropping line here, dividing light and shadow. Um, dividing light and shadow. And here the integrated door handles. So this is, looks really seamless and this is an interesting solution because we, we've seen some that like pop out and go in again. And here in this case, it's the way they stay as they are. And just from the background, there's like an, like an area which gives you some kind of haptical feedback. And I have to say, why not? I think this solution is better than we've seen with Porsche, for example, where they come towards you in a very strange way. So, yeah. Then also crossover cladding in the lower area. And Almost all versions and all versions that start with this vehicle will be rear-wheel driven because the MEB platform is rear-wheel driven and then optional and all-wheel drive for the top version will soon come to the engine specs. In the rear we can see these three-dimensional tail lamps and they come then with an you know, elaborate LED function when you pick the matrix LED and the light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle again with the retro logo. So, rather a normal hatch style, but with a little bit more shape right here. And then there's a big crossover cladding contrast in the lower part. That's maybe a little bit too big for my taste. But what do you think? Towing capacity will, by the way, be maximum 1,200 kilograms, or about 2,600 pounds. So you can also tow something, at least, here also with the EV. So besides Tesla, some, you know, more, a lot of electric vehicles do not have towing capacity. This one does here. And the maximum speed, by the way, will be 160 kilometers or 100 miles per hour. It's also interesting that this one will be a truly worldwide vehicle. It will be sold almost anywhere and also produced on three continents. So in Europe, in Zwickau, Germany, in the US, in Chattanooga, and also in China for the local market there.
And in the LED higher trim version, you can see here the rear tail lamps also feature these cascading turning indicators. And here we also have a second car for you. First of all, this color here is dusk blue, a very beautiful blue. Comes close to a Thomas blue we call it right here in our channel. And you can see this car does not feature everything. So it's always good to show you a less spec model. 20 inch wheels, yeah, these are already the bigger ones, but not the biggest ones. And then you can see it does not feature the front LED strip. This is just a plain white one, but looks somewhat the same from the distance. And these are also the base headlamps. They are already LED, but then mirrored here on the inside, you can see. So not with the elaborated high beam function, for example. And the side profile here of this blue vehicle, I think what becomes clear is that even the 20 inch wheels don't look too big. So the 18 inch entry wheels will deliver you the best comfort. But I'm really looking forward to if it still works from the visual, as, uh, you know, visual aspect. By the way, suspension wise, there's a base suspension and optional you can go with the DCC, dynamic chassis control, that's the adaptive suspension we also know from the combustion engine models. And finally a rear view and you can see when you have the base headlamps you still get the light strip that goes all the way over the vehicle but then again you do not have this three-dimensional tail lamp design but a more simple or plain one but still looks quite okay. And in the base version the turning indicators look like this and like this in the rear. And a short look here under the front hood you see there is no frunk so that's maybe a little miss so just here for wiper fluid, for example. Yeah, but then again, the front part is held pretty short, so you don't waste too much space. And here a look at the cutaway model. You can see the battery pack is placed centralized and low in the vehicle. That ensures a low center of gravity and greater driving dynamics. There will be two battery sizes available here, 52 kilowatt hours or 77 kilowatt hours. The small battery will come with 150 or 170 horsepower the big battery with 175 or 204 horsepower. Then so far all rear wheel driven and later on there will also be a 300 horsepower performance version available. Will it be maybe called R? And this one then has all-wheel drive and about six seconds in the acceleration figure. And the official range figures for the small battery 360 kilometers or 200 miles and for the bigger battery 520 kilometers or 320 miles. Charging here, you can see it's very well protected against rain with this one and then additional cover for the DC charger. So AC charging, 7.2 kilowatt for the small battery and 11 kilowatt for the big battery. And DC charging, 100 kilowatt max for the small battery and 125 kilowatt for the big battery. An interesting fact here for the rear. So the rear axle will get drum brakes and you might first think, oh, that's a cheap solution, but there's a reason for that. First of all, with electric vehicles, there is not so much brake use because regeneration is used first, so there is rather a problem of corrosion because the discs are not being used enough. So then drum brakes in the rear can make sense. You also don't need so much braking performance in the rear. And the drum brakes are also creating less brake dust. So this is the car key, slim actually, the high gloss, hmm, maybe some scratches after a while, I don't know, but it looks and feels quite nice, but again, quite skeptical about the shiny black. So here and then again the door handles, you see there's also illumination and also key is entry. Here for example the mirrors fold in when you touch it on the outside, when you go on the inside just open it, it will also release then the side mirrors again. And here you, there we go, <laughs> so and here you just hold it and you know pull a little bit you have a little bit of haptic feedback behind that so i think it's actually a nice solution then door closing sound very solid pretty cool and then inside of the doors here the top part is from soft touch then you have a leather red insert so all the materials beside the steering wheel you see in this car will be animal free then reasonable door pockets they also open the electric hatch here now there's one interior styling right here. The dark one, there's also a bright one available. Soft touch here on the top dash. 
then the steering wheel with capacitive buttons, left side for cruise control. Um, there they're like in two steps basically that you can use them for one or ten kilometer steps. Right side then to control something of these instruments and also for the volume. Zoom more comments to that. Then the seats. They're actually pretty cool. So the base seat will start with fabric cover and this one is the more elaborate high trim seat then with microfiber. So this is really feeling very high class. Then with the stitching in these areas and the outside is then again a leatherette and everything is really high class quality. So really impressed by that. And the seat itself also looks pretty cool. There will of course be different color trims available later on. Ergo active seats, that means they are special ergonomics forms, also with the memory seating and also electric controls right here. And later on there will also be a sports seat available then with an integrated head restraint. And now let's get inside, easy entry and indeed you have an SUV seating position. So yeah, it feels, feels good, electric seats here, the steering wheel with a manual style, you see here this digital instrument is actually integrated in that steering wheel so that moves up and down alongside. Um, it looks a little bit weird at first but the positive thing about it is that you never block your view with the steering wheel in, in that way then. Steering wheel itself by the way in the very base version it will start with a PU so this will be then animal free but as soon as you go for the travel assist so the elaborated assistance systems for lane keeping and distance combined then it's an animal wrap. However, they are also developing an animal free material for that at the moment. That it also then works with a capacitive function for the assistance system that the car knows that you're actually still there and holding the steering wheel. Then here, when I put it in the lowest position, the seat with one minute A6 or six with one, still some headroom left. There is a panoramic view, uh, roof here available. You see here you slide it open or close it here with this you know, slider area. It cannot be open, it's a fixed panoramic roof, but it's really large and goes all over the vehicle. And overall, a very comfortable seating position, like these seats, can be lengthened in a manual way in the lower part. And again, this really feels like, you know, stepped up the game, it really feels like a premium vehicle. And a nice detail are these pedals here with pause and play for brake and acceleration. Interesting also these armrests here and you can adjust them here in a different height so they stay like this and this has some kind of traveling feeling. Now to the interior overview, left side small digital instruments, they always come like this and the gear selector is here for putting in drive or reverse gear. Then you can also see it has this illumination there in the front. There's also a rear camera with PDC, I'll put it back to the park mode. And then on the right side here, either 10 inch or optional this 12 inch screen. So two different sizes available. The base one will also, of course, just do fine. Soon more details about this touchscreen. One thing in advance, temperature slider here in the lower area and volume slider right here. And this is, of course, yeah, doing it while driving, not the best solution. So I prefer manual stuff there or maybe then a shortcut at steering wheel, but the steering wheel again is also capacitive here, also with the volume control. Um, it looks fancy, but it's not the best user interface. Then here are some hotkeys, for example, to access the climate function like this, then you can also, you know, control it like here, it's off at the moment, or also for the driving modes, because this car will also feature DCC, dynamic chassis control, the adaptive suspension. You can see here, soft touch here, then there's this decal element, also some ambient lighting here, then there's, um, rather hard pick underneath. In the lower area you have adaptive cup holders, really open space atmosphere. Then this slider can be open and you have an inductive charging pad, two more USB-C supplies. And oh, these splitters here, hmm, they look familiar, quite Tesla-ish. And the instruments here on the left, kept pretty simple and basic, so mainly the speed and the range. Of course there will be more range available, as I told you earlier. This one not properly charged and here the assistance system for example you can go the bigger or smaller and on the right side there would then be the gps input appearing and the head display it would appear bigger to the human eye than does here look on camera with the speed and the loud speed but also some gps information there on for example and it also has an augmented reality function that you can see for example some arrows on the road now more details about this screen know that this is a prototype vehicle and can be a little bit different than later on but we experienced that with the ID3 already that 
it maybe needs some more CPU power or so. Um, and also the visualization looks already quite old school. At least, you know, the main menu is, you know, with a quite good overview, that's okay. GPS then looks like this. Let's check out the map here. And this is actually quite clear. Um, again, I cannot be very certain about how responsive it will be in the final version. Here it's, you know, like somewhat. Um, but definitely not responsive enough. We'll see how it how it's later on in the final vehicle. But um, overall, I think the software side is something they still can work on with this vehicle. You do have some hotkeys here, for example, with the climate function. And again, you have a classic climate where you can also control the vent strength, for example, when the car is on, um, because it's not properly powered at the moment. But you also have this vent program, and here you can also access the, um, the seat heating, or you would do that right there. Other than that, here the drive assist, you can change some of the assist and systems here for example, but then you have to press on the upper part. So with the elaborated functions are available and they also scored very well for example in the ID3 test. Here the driving modes once again, this will be especially relevant for the dynamic chassis control. We have the sports mode with more throttle input, yes, but then also the suspension will get stiffer if you have the DCC. And CarPlay integration, Android Auto is of course also available. Here, this one also wireless, but I usually connect it with a cable. And then it has a very good integration right there. And the sound system here sounds quite nice. I think, um, yeah, it's an awesome song. You should get it. And I think because the speakers are, you know, put way outside, and then you have this van style atmosphere that might also serve for um, the good resonance here. Very nice. This vehicle also features some bright features. Here, for example, white inserts at the inside of the doors, white steering wheel, and also the steering column. That looks nice, as a nice contrast. However, this one is not equipped with the panoramic roof. They could also see how it looks like without it. Here in this vehicle, we can also see the ambient lighting a little bit better. And the rear compartment, you do have hard pack at the inside of the doors in the rear. That could be better here in this, you know, segment above, definitely. But nice seating position here. The bench falls a little bit backwards, but so far it makes a good impression. However, I'm more a friend of upright benches. However, what they did here is when you have the falling bench, then you ensure a little bit more headroom. Um, it gets close with one meter six or six foot one, but still, you know, plenty of space. And look from here to the panoramic roof is really, really cool. There's this black shade you can also close then against you know more sun here then plenty of leg room left although it's not such a long vehicle so the space is very well used again a nice microfiber leatherette mix here in the seating area in the rear isofix here at the outsides each then you can pull down this here for non-adaptive cup holders actually there's also a ski hatch available right here and good thing that there's no middle tunnel, electric building platform, so you can also sit very well in the in the middle part. It's also not too stiff here, quite soft leatherette, and then yeah, it's actually a nice seating position also for the middle seat. That's a good advantage. And then there's an additional climate unit here in the rear with some USB supplies. And as for the trunk, electric tailgate is an option or included in the higher trims. A lot of space right here, very good square dimensions, there's some more space underneath for a charging cable, even more space underneath then. So yeah, that's pretty cool. When I put a standard backpack in here, you can see it very well also fits from the height and the measures here, the length is 95 centimeters. The width in the lower part about a meter, a little bit more than in this part. And it's not possible to fold the seats from here. We have to go around for that. But already the height here is at you know, just 45 centimeters under this cover. Of course, you can also remove that. And here now you can see a one third, two third split. Of course, you can also fold the whole thing. And then to the front seats here, this is about one meters and 80. And about the child safety test, note that this is one of the very first prototype vehicles, but still, whoa, whoa. Yeah, that torque is a little bit too heavy, so yeah, if the engineers are watching, maybe reduce that torque a little bit for the final version. And now to the conclusion for today. 
the VW ID4. First of all, the exterior with this round styling and the Beetle heritage. It looks a little bit vanish from the side profile, which has to do with this electric building platform because there's a very short hood. However, still with this crossover look for sure. And the building form when you sit on the inside really rather feels like an SUV. And talking about the inside, you feel that is, you know, definitely a stepped up if you compare it to the ID3. So a little bit more premium. It's also a segment above that. Really nice with these microfiber seats, definitely, but also the base fabric seats will just do fine. And they're really more consistent, especially if you compare it to the Škoda Enyaq. They used a lot of animal skin materials. Here, Volkswagen is really consistent in their choices as for the seats happen to the ID3 and here also to the ID4. They want to be more sustainable on the interior and of course as a whole also producing this car once again CO2 neutral with CO2 savings in production and also then evening out for example with planting trees later on. So a very good approach. They really want to be more consistent in this topic now after all. Steering wheel materials will also be updated. I told you earlier about that. Then you also have a lot of space on the interior. This is also a thing which is platform here is really supplying very well. And prices between 37 and 60,000 euros. So entry version of this vehicle will actually be quite attractive as for the pricing. And this is probably also one of the most important things about this vehicle. It will be a very competitive compact or mid-size SUV depending on your perspective and won't have so much competition yet. Of course, more is yet to come, and there's also the Tesla Model Y, for example. But I'm really sure that this one will be one of the heavy hitters EV SUVs on the market. What are the disadvantages? Capacitive buttons on the steering wheel, didn't like them too much, also with driving the ID3. Software in the infotainment system, I also would expect a little bit more as for that. So these are the two downsides of this vehicle to me. Other than that, it looks like a very, very promising concept after all. So thanks so much for tuning in today. Also tune into the Škoda Enyaq episode and also to our recent tester episodes, for example. See you there or see you next time.